Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Biddulph. Now I am a children's author and illustrator. Maybe you've seen some of my picture books. This one here was my very, very first picture book. It's called Blown Away. It's all about this chap here, Penguin Blue. He goes out flying his kite on a very, very windy day and ends up getting, well, blown away. Super proud of that one. Maybe you've seen my World Book Day book. This is my very special World Book Day book. Isn't it cute? It's nice and small. It's called Charlie McGrew and the Horse That He Drew. And I really, really love that book. It says they're free book, um, but it's only free if you exchange it for one of your World Book Day vouchers. And I think, oh, you, you haven't got long. If you're watching this when I first put the video up, you might just about be able to exchange it. Otherwise though, it only costs one pound, so it's a bargain. But it's a draw with Rob story. And what that means is I am not the only illustrator of this book because you guys have to finish off some of the pictures. Like this, for example, Charlie's block of flats. I've left some of the windows blank so you can add the other residents. So the story is all about this boy called Charlie who's not allowed to have any pets in his flats. So he decides to draw himself a horse here. But look, I've left bits out for you to finish off. Add the horse's swishy tail. The horse is hungry at one point. So look, you need to draw some tasty food for the horse. And here you need to give our horse some lovely bright colours. So check that one out. It's nice and cheap. It's for a good cause. So I hope you really like it. I am, again, very proud of that. Maybe you've seen my chapter books. The Peanut Jones series, all about a girl who finds a magic pencil. Whatever she draws with that pencil, it becomes real. So one day she draws a door, which when she opens it, it leads to this totally illustrated world, this illustrated city called Chroma. And if you look at this book, look, I have done so many illustrations. I like that spread, hang on, that one, look at that. There's a point when she falls and I've made it all, ooh, all the type and everything is falling. But look, you can see I've done loads of illustrations in this book and they're not just stick drawings. <laughs> They're like proper shaded drawn illustrations and I'm very very proud of it. I think this is a very very good first chapter book because the chapters are nice and short and as I said 200 illustrations. So check that one out. But we are here today to do a drawing as per usual. Let's put our bit of paper down. There we go. But to this episode of Draw With Rob is a very very special one because today is our fourth birthday pretty much exactly four years since I put up the first video. Here is a little clip of the first video. <sighs> Doesn't seem long ago, does it? I'm sure lots of you have drawn this one. Even if you didn't do it with me back in 2020 when I first put it up, you've probably done it since. I think it's my most viewed vid video actually still. Um, and it's Gregosaurus. So hang on, if I just, we'll get rid of that video and I'll show you. Look, the Gregosaurus was from my Dinosaur Juniors book. You might not even know that. You might have just drawn the dinosaur, but actually he was the main character in my first Dinosaur Juniors book. There he is. And um, yes, people just seem to love that video. And that's where kind of the whole Draw With Rob thing really started. Because I always tell people this at my live shows, but this is how it worked. I was watching the news on a Sunday back in March of 2020 and they said on the news they're gonna close the schools. And so I thought, well, I can help. So I recorded that video of me drawing Gregosaurus on the Monday. I put it up on YouTube on the Tuesday. On the Wednesday, so many thousands of people had watched the video that I was on news at 10 that night. <laughs> and I started to get sent thousands and thousands and thousands of drawings from children all over the world, like these ones that you can see on the screen right now. And do you know what, to this day, I'm still, obviously, as you can see, still making the Draw With Rob videos, I absolutely love it. And I get sent drawings every single day of my life. I also get asked what pens I use every single day of my life. And I also get asked a lot where Ringo is, because <laughs> Ringo has made a few appearances in my videos. Ringo is my dog, in case you don't know. But anyway, back to our drawing. So I thought today, I would show you how to draw, seeing as it's our birthday, a little birthday cake character. What do you think? Good idea? It's nice and simple this one, but very, very cute. So this is what you are going to need. You are going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need a pen or a pencil, something to draw with. If you've got something you can colour with later on, great. If you haven't, don't worry, just use your pencil to shade stuff in. But that's all you're going to need. And I will tell you how Draw With Rob works in case this is the very first time you've seen one of these videos. 
um, you have got four years worth to catch up on and they're all available for free on my website and on my YouTube channel so go back and look up your favorites we've got all sorts of things for you to draw but this is how it works lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing I say nonsense everybody can draw some people just need a bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in which is where I come in because we are going to break this drawing of a little birthday cake character down into bite-sized pieces no pun intended which means I am going to draw a little bit on my piece of paper here then you can pause your video copy what I do start me up again I will draw a little bit more then you will draw then I will draw then you will draw then I will draw then you will draw I will draw you draw I draw you draw I draw you draw by the end you're going to end up with a picture that you're very proud of trust me and I do you know what I think this one's a really really good one to draw for somebody's birthday because um it's a birthday cake so what better present than a lovely drawing so there we go right shall we start okay now what I want you to do first of all in the middle of your piece of paper maybe slightly above center but not much above center I want you to draw a horizontal line about that long so what's that 10 centimeters something like that so a nice easy start then I want you to just curve around and head down, not very far, a couple of centimetres. But can you see I've done a very slightly curved corner? It doesn't really matter, but I want, I want, I'm want. i going to keep mine a bit curvy in the corners. Let's do the same on the other side. We're going to curve around and head down, similar distance, like so. Now this is a fun bit because what I want you to do, we're going to join these two lines up, but we're not going straight across. We're going to go sort of up and down and bumpy, bumpy. So I'm going to turn around there and then I'm going to come down there. Then I'm going to go up there. I'm going to, you can do whatever you like here. We keep it quite random as long as you join them up on the other side. And again, I'm keeping everything quite sort of curvy. I wonder if you can guess which part of the birthday cake that is going to be. Right, the next thing to do, we'll go over to the right hand side here and just inside, so not right on the edge, but just sort of at the bottom of that curve, I want you to draw a vertical line going down to about there. So quite long. Now, can you see how this line is all bumpy? That's because I'm using one of my brush pens, my big thick Kurataki brush pen. And I love that so much, that sort of uneven random edge. It just adds a little bit of um, randomness to our drawings which I really really love and I should have said earlier on actually if yours doesn't end up looking exactly like mine which it probably won't um, not because I'm so brilliant at drawing just because it just won't we're not machines we can't replicate things exactly in fact I don't want yours to look exactly like mine I want it to look like yours so if yours doesn't look exactly like mine great don't worry about it certainly don't get all cross with your drawing and rub it out or screw it up and start again just keep on drawing Whenever you make a, you think you make a mistake, actually, it's those bits I think that add a bit of personality to your drawing. So don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. That's why I love this kind of random edge to the line here. Right, let's do another line, same length down on this side. Like so, dead straight down. Now we are gonna join these two up and we are gonna join them up in a straight line this time, not a wobbly one. And hopefully you can see our birthday cake appearing. So that wobbly bit that we did was the icing on top of the birthday cake, kind of dribbling down. Okay, what should we do next? I'll tell you what, let's add a bit of decoration. Um, I like it. Do you guys ever have this for a birthday cake? You know Maltesers, those sweets, those little round chocolate sweets that have got honeycomb in the middle. Oh, I like it when people put them on top of a cake. I really love honeycomb, I really love chocolate. Chocolate and honeycomb on top of a cake is a total winner. So I'm gonna draw some Maltesers on top of my cake. Now listen, you can decorate your cake however you like, but this is just quite a fun thing to do, I think. So I'm gonna add a little Malteser circle there. I'm gonna add another one there and another one there. But you can do anything you like. You could do little heart shapes, anything. But I'm just gonna add some little Malteser shapes on top of my cake. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add, you know, you have icing. Usually cakes are like sandwiches, aren't they? You have one sponge on top and then another sponge on the bottom and they're sort of stuck together with icing. So we're now gonna draw the icing, but I'm gonna do something a bit different with the icing. Because do you remember, this is gonna be a birthday cake character. So I'm gonna do my icing 
in a sort of smile shape. So the icing is going to sort of represent our character's mouth. So I'm going to start about halfway up. I'm just going to go down and up a little bit like that. So it's almost like in a smile shape. And then we're going to do another line half a centimetre away from it like that and a little sort of smiley mouth shape and that might not really look like a smiley mouth yet but it will now because I'm going to add our character's eyes we're going to add two circles right in the middle just above that smiling icing mouth one there and one there and then what we're going to do right in the middle of both of those we're going to add smaller circles like that and we're going to colour them in and look our birthday cake is suddenly a birthday cake character cool huh cool i might even add some eyelashes and some eyebrows a bit later but we're going to do that after we've done the colouring which is we've got a few other bits and pieces to do before we do that let's add some legs for our birthday cake character now if you have watched any of my other videos so quite often you guys I draw food but I turn it into a living character <laughs> and I don't know why but I think you guys like it too because they're very popular my my uh, character food videos so for example I've done a cupcake which is quite similar to birthday cake but cupcake I've drawn a what else have I done a watermelon I've done a slice of pizza <laughs> And um, I pretty much do the same with all of them. I just draw a slice of pizza, add a couple of eyes and a smiley mouth, add some legs and an arm, and that's it, right? Easy peasy. And this is how I always do the legs. We start off just by drawing two vertical lines for legs coming down from the bottom of our cake. And then what you do for the feet, I just do a little bend like that at the bottom. That's just how I draw these particular characters, um, legs and feet. And similarly, the arms are really easy too. So I'm going to do one arm coming out from below the mouth. And it's just going to bend around like that, little arm. And the other one, exactly the same on the other side. So our character is sort of raising both of their arms. Let's add some hands. Now the hands, I'm going to use a slightly thinner pen here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw like a little square on the end of the arm like that okay then coming out of the side I'm gonna draw a little thumb and then one two three four fingers in fact you know what I'm gonna do let's make the square we'll make it a bit more round let's make it more of a circle like that <laughs> and then this one is different I'm just gonna draw a circle like so and that's because this hand is going to be holding something. So this hand is open like that, but this hand is closed because it's going to be holding something. I wonder what our birthday cake could be holding. We'll come to that a bit later. The next thing I want to add now is some candles on top of our birthday cake. Now, the reason I did our little Maltesers first is because I want my candles to sit behind the Maltesers. That's why I didn't draw the candles first because then it would have been hard to make the Maltesers look like they're in front of it. So that's that's a common thing with drawing, I think. The order that you do it, you should always draw the things that are nearest the front first and then the things that are behind afterwards. It just makes everything a bit easier. So. It's my fourth birthday. It's Draw With Rob's fourth birthday today, so I'm going to draw four candles. So the first thing that I want you to do is we're going to draw like vertical lines coming up there from behind our two Maltesers. And then at the top, we do another little wobbly line like so. Okay, there's one candle. And we're going to draw four, and let's do a little wick like that. Then let's draw another one. This one, I'm gonna try and space them evenly. This one, I'm gonna do the line coming up in between. Another line there. They can be at slightly different angles. The wobbly bit, which is like the top of the candle wax, like so. And another little wick. That's two of our candles. This is easy, this one, isn't it? The other one, we're gonna do there. One line, two lines, trying to keep them roughly the same thickness. You can change the type of wobble that you do, like that. And then a wick there. And then the last one, we'll squeeze that one in there. Wobbly, 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 wobbly. And a little candle wick. There we go. It's not quite perfect, 
But then, what is perfect in this life? <laughs> now, the flames. This is how we do the flames. We start off with a smiley mouth that goes through the wick, like that. Then we sort of go up in a sort of S shape. And then we go back down here. There's one of our flames. Now, the thing about flames is they sort of flicker, don't they? They all look different. So I would start all of them with the smiley mouth, like that. But then the other bits, you should try and make them all a bit different. So this one I'm gonna do going the other way, like that. This one I think I'll just do going straight up, like that. And then this one, let's go, we'll go that way again. And there we go. My candles look like they're flickering. Isn't this good? I like this one. Okay, so we're nearly there. This is quite easy, isn't it? It's quite an easy one. And remember, you can do whatever you like. You can add as many candles as you like. You can add no candles, one candle. You can change the Maltesers to whatever shapes you like. It's infinite. And when it comes to colouring, it's even more infinite. You can do whatever you want. But what I am going to do my little birthday cake holding is a birthday balloon. So first of all, let's do our birthday balloon string. So let's come up straight through the middle of the hand. I'm going to do a little loop in my birthday balloon string and then I'm going to finish about there. Okay, so that's my string. And a nice little detail when you're drawing a balloon is this. Add a little circle on the end. In fact, I'm going to change to my thinner pen. Add a little circle on the end there. Then add a little sort of oval shape there. A little oval shape there. And then just put a few little bits of string coming out that and it looks like the end of the string has been tied into a little bow it's just a nice finishing touch as often they, they say the devil is in the details which means it's the details that add sort of the really fun parts to your drawing i think so balloons this is how we draw balloons if any of you have ever met me at one of my events and you've asked me to sign books for people's birthdays i always draw a little birthday balloon in their book and i also draw a little bit of birthday cake as well although i don't draw birthday cake character but from now on i think i'm going to and this is how i always draw balloons the first thing we're going to do we're going to draw like a little tiny oval shape like that at right angles to your bit of string then what we do we do like a little triangle on top of that so it looks like a little hat then we draw a little circle which is kind of the knot in the balloon and next last but not least we draw the balloon shape and this is how we draw a balloon so let's start with another one of those smiles a bit like our flames okay then we're going to go up and we're going to go out and around so it's that kind of balloon shape you can do yours any shape you like though you can just do a round balloon if it's easier but that's the balloon shape i'm going to do and because this is our fourth birthday, let's give this balloon a number four. But you can do whatever you like, especially if you're drawing this for somebody else's birthday present. I think it's a nice detail to add their age in the balloon like that. So there we go. What do you think? I like this little character. It's fun. In fact, this character could even do with a story, I think. Hey guys, what about what about you write a story for this character as a special fourth birthday present to me to draw with Rob? Why don't you write your little birthday cakes story? That would be great and you could send it to me. I would love to see that. Right, I'm going to go away now and I'm going to go into super speed mode and I'm going to colour my birthday cake in. And there's a few things that I want to tell you about and then we've got to add a few finishing touches afterwards. So I will see you back here in about 25 seconds. <laughs> with a fully coloured in birthday cake, okay? Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so there is my coloured in birthday cake. What do you think? 
I think it's pretty cool. So you can see my color scheme, pretty obvious. I've gone for a chocolate cake uh, because I love chocolate cake. And um, what I've done, so I've colored it in sort of browns. I've sort of roughly decided my light's coming in from here. So slightly darker brown on the left than it is on the right, the chocolate, and same with the pinks here. And I've just added a few dots and spots here and there, a bit like when we draw dinosaur skin texture. I've sort of done the same sort of effect. Um, so. So it sort of looks a bit like cakey texture, but I've also kind of combined it to make it look a bit like freckles, <laughs> to make our character to look a little bit cuter. I'm gonna add some eyelashes here. Now, the reason I'm doing that now is because I wanted to do it after I'd done my coloring, because um, uh, it's much easier to draw on top of colored pencil than it is to color around ink sometimes. So there we go, some eyelashes, and let's add a couple of eyebrows. We'll put one up there and one up there. So they're sort of hidden a bit by the icing but they're still there. It just adds a little bit more personality to our cake. Okay, what else can I tell you? So as I said, I've gone for pink icing because also the pink makes you sort of think of a mouth there as well, I think. But brown and pink is a lovely color combination, I think. There's my Maltesers. You can see I've shaded them to make them look like little globes of chocolate with honeycomb in them. So I, I left the bit a little white circle on the top right area of each of the globes and then just sort of um, made them darker a bit around the bottom left hand area just to make them look three-dimensional and the real key I think when you're doing shading like that to make something look spherical is leaving a slight little bit of lighter color right around the edge after you've done the dark and it just makes it look rounder I gave my candles nice pink diagonal stripes you can do whatever you like with yours rainbow colored candles would be lovely and I've done my flames going from sort of dark red to to yellow in the middle. Now, I think maybe I should have done it the other way around. So red in the middle and going out to yellow. But you know what? It doesn't really matter either way. I think it still works. And then just to keep everything harmonious, I made my balloon pink with a yellow number. And I've just added, just again, I've just left a little kind of halo of white right around the edge and a couple of little circles of light there just to suggest that this there's a bright light shining somewhere in this room <laughs> with our little birthday cake character is. Finally, I added this lovely um, sort of greeny turquoisey colors. I just added a little bit in the eyes, just like that to give the eyes a bit of depth. But also I just think, weirdly, if you're leaving something white and you add a bit of this turquoise, it makes it look even whiter. And I don't really know why that is, but it works. And it also links up to the, sh the color I used in the shadow here. So you know I love shadow stuff. Just a little bit of scribble around the feet. And if you make it darker right next to the feet, it really, really does emphasize that kind of three-dimensional illusion. So there we go, that's pretty much everything. The last thing we've got to do, which we can never forget, of course, we need to sign our drawing. So I'm gonna do a full signature. It's our fourth birthday. We might as well do this properly. All right, Rob Biddle, like so. There we go, Rob Biddle, signed, done. We need to let everyone know who has created these wonderful works of art. And I love that little character. It's a suitable character for our fourth birthday. What do you think? And as I said, I think this is a really good idea for birthday presents, or at the very least birthday cards. You can draw your little cake character for all of your friends. Um, because I think a hand-drawn birthday card is so much nicer than a shop-bought birthday card, personally. If somebody makes me a hand-drawn card, I mean, lots of you are so kind, and you give when you come and see me at my events and meet me afterwards at the signings, you give me lovely cards made of your drawings. And I keep every single one. I absolutely love them. I really, really treasure them. And I think anybody would love to get a birthday card with this guy on it, holding up a balloon with their <laughs> age on it. Don't you think that's a super cool thing to do? And what's more, it's really fun for you to make it as well. So everybody is a winner. Um, so yeah, I really like this drawing and I really want to see your drawings. This is how I get to see them. You need to post it on social media using this hashtag draw with Rob that way I will get to see it if you're watching on Facebook you can just comment below with a picture of your picture that way I'll get to see that so please do do send them to me I love to see it um, 
Uh, and also, as I said, this is our fourth birthday, so you have four years worth of Draw With Rob videos to check out. I think this is video number, what video number are we up to? We are up to, I think it's number 151, actually. So you've got 150 other videos. In fact, there's more than that, because there's some that are kind of special editions. So you've got probably about 175 videos to choose from. Here are a few of my favorites, just still shots of my favorites here. So uh, go and check them out, just go to my channel and search you know whatever whatever you want to draw a picture of you, the chances are you'll find it um, and I've loved doing these videos for you guys over the last four years and what I really really love is when I see your pictures it makes me feel so proud some some of you have done every single video I know you show me all your books full of the drawings and it makes me feel so, feel so proud of you guys that you're drawing along with me all the time so yes do go and check them out what else uh, oh yes subscribe to my newsletter why don't you do that just go to this website address here and um, click on the subscribe button and that way you will get sent a little email uh, every time I have a new book out or I'm doing a live event or there's a new episode of Draw With Rob, I will tell you on uh, that email. It's totally free. There's no spam. Don't you worry about that. Won't be sending you any adverts, anything like that. We'll just be sending you all the Rob news you could want. Um, what else? I think. I think that's about it. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to my YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, please give that that subscribe button and that like button a bit of a press, that would be lovely. Um, and then again, you'll get notified if there's any new videos. Um, other than that, it's been a pleasure spending my fourth birthday with you guys. Keep on watching my videos, keep on drawing, keep on reading. Most importantly, take care of yourselves and I will see you again very soon. Bye everyone. everyone it's Rob here I hope you enjoyed your draw with Rob video I'm just popping up here again at the end I've got Ringo with me as you can see he's having a bit of a nap at the moment um, but I just popped up here to tell you about my brand new draw with Rob activity book and this is it it's called draw with Rob in space and out of this world art activity book and I think you're really gonna like this one so what's inside it well we have um, lots of puzzles uh, like these ones. We have some bits where I've started off the drawing and you guys have to finish the drawing off. I really like this one. It shows the cockpit of a spaceship and you have to add the controls. We have some crafting ideas for you. There's even a card game in there too. And of course, plenty of our usual draw alongs like these guys. And of course, once you've done your draw alongs, you, you draw them in the little frame that I have made next to the instructions. And then can you see here, look, the pages, you probably can't see, but the pages are perforated down that side. So once you've done your drawing here, you just tear the page out, stick it up on the fridge, ready to display. And then once you've finished the entire book, once you've been through the whole activity book, you've got a nice certificate. You know, this is to certify that your name is officially a space superstar. So lots and lots of interstellar entertainment for you to keep you occupied when you're not watching a Draw With Rob video. The book is available now um, from wherever you get your books. Try and support your local bookshop if you can. Um, and if you get it and you enjoy it, please let me know and send me lots of your pictures. I love to see your pictures. Right, that's it. I'm done. You can get on with the rest of your day now. I will see you very soon for another episode draw with Rob. Bye everyone.